All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and honestly going over why I didn't buy this knife again sooner. And this is a knife that honestly I've had for I think a couple months now, and I really do enjoy the heck out of carrying it. Surprisingly, has actually made its way into my EDC rotation more than I thought, especially because of all the other knives that I have that are also incredibly awesome that I really like. But this guy continues to make it into the rotation. I thought I'd break down what this knife is is exactly obviously to the paramilitary too and kind of explain why I'm really liking it and explain why I didn't add one back to the collection sooner. So let's first talk about that. Why didn't I add one of these back to the collection sooner? And the primary reason why initially was because I have a Para 3 and have had a Para 3 for a while. It isn't super featured on the channel and I don't EDC it a ton, though it is one of my more favorite smaller knives um, to EDC when I do EDC or want a smaller knife uh, for carry. So it does have a purpose and does have a reason. And Honestly, when I first got this, I was like, man, why did I even have a paramilitary too? Because of this guy is just a much better size and still really feels good in the hand and is pretty awesome. And don't get me wrong, I do really enjoy the Para 3, but I definitely haven't had a paramilitary too for quite a few years. It was actually one of the initial knives that I got for EDC. And so I, you know, had it for a long time, didn't really use it, opted for the Benchmade Adamus, I think more at the time. And so it kind of fell by the way side so when I no longer had it I was like okay you know it's it's not a big deal I'll get a pair of three because I like the size more and I EDC that a lot more so that was kind of true I definitely like the para 3 a lot and that's why I didn't really go for a paramilitary 2 again for a long time however I had after many years kind of wanted that bigger knife back in the collection honestly seeing the kinds of awesome limited editions that were out there with the types of steel options that this the paramilitary 2 was offered in I decided to get a cutlery shop exclusive uh, paramilitary 2 so that's what this one is here you can see it has the blaze orange side on it and then a od green side and i personally really like it especially from this angle because you can just barely see that you know orange kind of uh, popping out on either side when you hold it at the right angle and then you have that really awesome rex 45 cpm rex 45 blade on it and this one is in satin so this one's in stone wash of course paramilitary twos and para threes come in a million different flavors but this one is in satin and so i thought it was just a really nice looking really clean looking blade and i kind of like that it's od green slash uh blaze orange is kind of a outdoorsy theme to it so between the steel and the handle colors, I was like, heck yeah, I'm gonna get that one if I'm gonna get another one again. And like I said, I really did wanna try out that Rex 45 steel with this blade. And so that is exactly what I did. And picking it up, it is a super clean blade. And in fact, um, I don't remember my paramilitary tube being as nice as this one. It is nice and lubed up, but it is a super clean blade. That satin finish really helps it be absolutely silky on its deployment and on its closing. It is a drop shot blade for sure and it is just so much fun to kind of fidget with play around with and uh yeah it is it's a super fun blade i really have been enjoying it but most importantly why i've been liking it for edc aside from the fidget factor and it being a really fun blade to open and close is its size i really did forget how when you can choke up on a blade like this um, and i especially like it with my hinder xm18s uh, when you can choke up on a blade you really get a lot more control on it so when you're trying to do things like cut open packages or cut open paper whatever you know like uh, mail in general it's, it was super controllable also too once again Again, with that kind of wilderness application this thing is really good at doing things like feather sticks uh, or if you need to you know process game animals it is super good for that as well but um, yeah overall the size was uh, I've initially when I had first had a paramilitary too I thought it was just a little bit too big for me but remembering um, how well you can actually choke up on the blade get really good solid control the jimping I think is really squared away on both the para three and on the paramilitary two because you just lock into that forward finger choil and the uh, kind of upper ramp and so the blade design the blade design really lends its hand as well to just doing well and having lots of control over that blade. But yeah, ultimately, um, 
between being able to control and choke up on it and just honestly the overall size of it. I think I've kind of, when I initially got into EDC knives, I thought I wanted more. I think I wanted more of a smaller kind of handle where it was kind of like, uh, you know, you could just barely fit all of your fingers on there and potentially choke up for a little added grip length. But I have become more of a fan, once again, kind of going back to those XM18s, you know, my three and a half inch XM18 is a lot similar or very similar in handle size so it gives you enough room to really get your hand on there but still as you guys can see have you know a little bit of wiggle room and i think what i like to call it is sprawling space where your hands can kind of like sprawl out they don't feel like they're all jammed up together but you know your hand can kind of sit on there comfortably and i will say i've always kind of thought the pair of three paramilitary two kind of look a little bit dopey uh in their handle design like the looks of it are not very attractive but i I mean, maybe to some people, but I never really thought that the actual handle design was very attractive, but it does really feel co quite comfortable in hand. And I will say it does feel good in hand. So ultimately at the end of the day, it's not so much about the looks that matter, but really they do feel, both of the Para 3 and the Paramilitary 2 do feel quite comfortable in the hand. Though I will say, I think the Paramilitary 2 feels just ever so slightly more comfortable because of that sprawl space, so to speak. So that is the Paramilitary 2 and, uh, I really, like I said, I've been thinking to myself a lot of like why, or a lot lately here, of why I waited so long to add one back into my collection, because they are really cool. And, uh, you know, there are definitely more expensive versions of these, and you can get them really kind of Gucci'd out with things like uh, Timascus, you know, uh, clips, handles, and you can really, you know, rack up a three to four hundred dollar uh, paramilitary tube before you know it and even this one itself was around 230 bucks so paramilitary twos aren't as cheap at least for the more kind of um the more kind of uh, colorful or flavorful options but they are all very good performers and while I probably wouldn't recommend buying a you know three four hundred dollar uh, spider coat in general unless it's like a special edition like a stovepipe or something like that um this is definitely a really solid knife and I can see why a lot of the EDC community loves the Paramilitary 2 and why it's offered in so many flavors, why there's so many different limited edition drops out there. And I've been thinking about potentially picking up even another one. If I do, it'll probably be in CPM M4 just because I want to try that steel out as well. And I think I've done a video kind of like the advantages of why you should get a Paramilitary 2, but I think that is definitely one of the big advantages to the Paramilitary 2 and sometimes the Para 3 is that you know it's a really good test bed for different steel options because spider co makes knives in so many different steels uh, out there i mean the list especially for paramilitaries is very very long um, and that's kind of fun because it's nice to test the same you know blade style blade shape grind grind angle on different steels because when you're testing you know certain steels out from different manufacturers you don't know how they're heat treating it you don't know you know kind of the quality can vary brand by brand so when you have one brand that's producing you know a wide flavor of steels it's kind of nice uh, especially in the same platform to test different steels edge retention you know slicing um, and just overall durability and quality of that steel itself so anyways that is the paramilitary 2 and kind of a comparison between the paramilitary 3 uh, ultimately i do like or i should say para 3 not paramilitary ultimately i do really like both of these guys uh, i will say i've definitely been carrying the bigger the paramilitary 2 a bit more than the para 3 just because i'm kind of uh, like my preferences are kind of moving away from or shying away from smaller knives and definitely if I'm going to run a smaller knife it's pretty much always going to be my Hinderer XM18 3 inch which is about the same size as this guy I just tend to like it a little bit more as far as smaller knives go but this big paramilitary 2 is uh, definitely a fun blade definitely like it and uh, like I said I've just been honestly EDCing it a lot it's been a really nice blade hopefully you guys uh, can get a nice close-up on this one once again, probably not the most aesthetically pleasing knife, but it is just really nice to carry and really nice to use for general tasks. So anyways, guys, that is the Paramilitary 2, my Paramilitary 2, and I'm glad I definitely added one back into the collection. I'll probably mod it out, put like a custom clip on it because that's pretty fun to do and add some variety. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.